Welcome to the training session titled Tracking the Elevated Mix Layer with a new Gozar Water Vapor Band. My name is Dan Bikus. Ed Zoke assisted me in putting this together. The learning objective for this session is to learn how to identify and track the elevated mix layer by making use of the low level water vapor band at 7.3 microns on Go 16 and the advected layer precipitable water product in tandem with other data sets. Here's an example of an elevated mix layer sounding from 17 May 2000 at North Platte, Nebraska. The low level moist air mass has origins from the Gulf of Mexico and exists under a capping inversion with dry air aloft that originates from the elevated terrain of the Rockies. Relative humidity is very low just above the inversion but increases at mid to upper levels. Note the very steep mid-level lapse rates. In fact, the mid-level lapse rates at 700 to 500 millibars is 9.3 degrees Celsius per kilometer, nearly dry adiabatic. Why is it important to know if an EML is in place for a potential severe thunderstorm event? The EML provides several favorable factors that can aid to a severe thunderstorm environment. The capping inversion can inhibit convection until a high cape exists. The cap allows poleward advection of warm, moist air at low levels. The cap prevents deep vertical mixing so that dew points do not decrease with daytime heating. The cap keeps thunderstorm development, if any, isolated, generally along low level convergence boundaries such as a front, dry line, or outflow boundary. Isolated storms have greater access to cape compared to numerous storms, which can cut off available instability for some storms. Commonly, storms can develop at the edge of the lid, for example, along a frontal boundary. Another characteristic of the EML is steep mid-level lapse rates, which allows relatively high cape to be achieved. These steep mid-level lapse rates may be advected eastward, so it's important to track the EML. Generally, convection will weaken the lapse rates in our EML by diametric heating. Our case study is from 1 December 2018, We'll focus on the slight risk region over Illinois. At 500 millibars, there's a closed low over Kansas moving northeast with a strong southwest flow aloft ahead of this upper low. The surface analysis at 18Z showed a surface low in northeast Kansas with a warm front across central Illinois. The warm sector in Illinois had temperatures around 60 with dew points in the mid to upper 50s under southerly flow. Let's begin with all three water vapor bands from GO-16. They depict a negatively tilted trough moving northeastward from west Texas towards northeast Kansas during this time period. The source region for the elevated mix layer is the elevated terrain of northern Mexico into the southwest U.S. We observe relatively warm brightness temperatures, most easily seen in the 7.3 micron loop in the upper left panel, originating from the typical source region and advecting towards the northeast with the upper level trough. We may suspect this to be an elevated mix layer, but we'll need to confirm this with soundings. But first we'll answer the question, why are we choosing the 7.3 micron band rather than one of the other two water vapor bands for identification of the EML? To help answer that, let's make use of the weighting function profile calculated from the Springfield Missouri 12Z sounding. If we move our animation to 12Z, I'll point out that Springfield, Missouri is located right here. And at 12Z, we have relatively warm brightness re region in southwest Missouri at the Springfield sounding at this time. It's important to understand what level in the vertical the water vapor bands are seeing. In order to assess this, we'll look at the weighting function profile for the three water vapor bands based on the sounding from Springfield, Missouri at 12Z. The weighting function is valid for clear sky conditions only and varies based on the water vapor profile. In this case, skies were clear. The weighting function represents the altitude where the majority of the signal on the layer is seen by the instrument. In other words, this allows you to visualize the relative contribution within that layer. All three water vapor bands are plotted with the green line being 6.2 microns, 
the blue line being 6.9 microns, and the magenta line being 7.3 microns. This illustrates why we choose the 7.3 micron band for identification of the EML. It looks furthest down in altitude, with a peak around 600 to 700 millibars, where the EML typically exists as very dry air with associated steep lapse rates. The other two water vapor bands are typically above where the EML would normally be found, particularly the 6.2 micron band. The URL listed at the bottom of the slide provides a real-time weighting function profile for the various sounding sites. The 12Z sounding from Springfield, Missouri indicates the dry air at mid-levels along with steep mid-level lapse rates that are characteristic of an elevated mix layer. The 700 to 500 millibar lapse rate is 6.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer, while the maximum lapse rate in a layer is shown here at 7.6 degrees Celsius per kilometer. This is confirmation that the warm brightness temperatures we observe on GO16 7.3 micron imagery is associated with an elevated mix layer. Note that the sounding does differ some from the earlier example we looked at from North Platte, which was a springtime event with a strong capping inversion. In this case, we're looking at a cold season event so that the capping inversion is not as strong and the top of the EML is not distinct since we don't have a hot, well-mixed boundary layer over significant depth coming off the elevated plateau source region like we do in a typical springtime event. Regions of warm brightness temperatures seen on GOES 7.3 micron imagery can occur for a variety of reasons. However, in this particular case, we've confirmed an EML with sounding data for the region of warmer brightness temperatures moving from Texas into Oklahoma and northeastward towards Missouri and eventually towards our slight risk area in Illinois that will provide for a more favorable environment for severe thunderstorms during the afternoon hours. A satellite product that may also be of use in identifying the elevated mix layer is the Advected Layer Precipitable Water product, usually referred to as the ALPW product. This product is derived from microwave instruments on several polar orbiting satellites. Moisture is derived from this data and combined with the GFS short-term wind forecast to advect the moisture to give it a smooth looking animation. The result is precipitable water at three hour intervals for the following layers. Surface to 850 millibars, 850 to 700 millibars, 700 to 500 millibars, and 500 to 300 millibars. This animation extends back to 18Z the previous day so that you can follow the three-dimensional moisture distribution through time. The lower level layers clearly show moisture advection from the Gulf of Mexico advecting northwards towards our region of interest in Illinois. The 700 to 500 millibar layer is ideal for identifying the dry air associated with an EML after an EML is confirmed with soundings. In this case, the dry air at 700 to 500 millibars is first seen in North Texas and Oklahoma, and we can see that dry region expand and move northeastward through Missouri and towards Illinois. The ALPW product is based on data from microwave instruments, which can see through clouds, although precipitating clouds can be an issue. The GO 7.3 micron band is susceptible to cloud coverage. In other words, high clouds may obscure an EML beneath it. Ideally, the GOES 7.3 micron band is used in tandem with the ALPW product and soundings to identify and track the EML. Here's the GOES 16 7.3 micron loop from 12 to 18Z. Note the region of warmer brightness temperatures moving from Missouri northeastward towards Illinois during this time period. In our next slide, we'll look at the sounding from Lincoln, Illinois. At 12Z, the sounding from Lincoln was northeast of this region of warmer brightness temperatures underneath the clouds. And at 18Z, we can see that the, the sounding site here at Lincoln was underneath this region of warmer brightness temperatures seen at 7.3 microns. 
Here's the 12 Z sounding from Lincoln, Illinois. The region of warmer brightness temperatures had not yet arrived here. The air mass is moist through a deep layer, and the 700 to 500 millibar lapse rate is only 4.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. However, if we change this to the 18 Z sounding, remember the region of warmer brightness temperatures existed at this time over Lincoln, and we can see the mid-levels have dried out considerably along with 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates of 6.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer, an increase of 2 degrees Celsius per kilometer since the morning sounding. In fact, the maximum lapse rate in a layer, which is plotted right here, is now up to 7.8 degrees Celsius per kilometer. The environment is now much more conducive to severe thunderstorms. This also serves as further confirmation of the EML that we continue to track on satellite imagery and products. This animation shows one possibility for monitoring the AML with satellite imagery and products in tandem with soundings and AWIPS. The two top panels are ideal for EML detection with the GOES 7.3 micron in the upper left and the ALPW 700 to 500 millibar layer as we just discussed in the upper right. In the bottom two panels, these are really up to you, uh, but I picked the IR imagery along with the METARs in the lower left panel to see where clearing occurs and also where you various boundaries are along with warm sector conditions. And by the end of the loop, we can see thunderstorm development in Illinois. In the bottom right, I have the wrap 700 to 500 millibar lapse rates so we can compare our observational data to model output. Here are the preliminary SPC storm reports which shows numerous tornado and hail reports across central Illinois from a few of the supercell thunderstorms that developed. In conclusion, the GOES 7.3 micron imagery combined with other data may be utilized to identify and track the EML. GOES 167.3 micron band makes this technique easier to apply compared to the legacy GOES sounder due to much greater horizontal and temporal resolution. The ALPW product provides PW values in a layer and the 700 to 500 millibar layer is particularly useful in diagnosing the EML. Remember that regions of warmer brightness temperatures we observe in the 7.3 micron water vapor band can occur for a variety of reasons. You, make, you need to make sure you confirm the EML by following where it came from and with soundings. Track the EML as it moves eastward. It can provide an important ingredient for severe thunderstorms. Then continue to monitor for convection with the, in the EML. Diabatic heating from the convection can modify the EML, in other words, lead to lapse rates that are not as steep. One of the questions you may be wondering about is why not just use model analyses to track the EML? While model output typically informs you that the EML may be a factor, even more than a day in advance, the details of how the EML is evolving can only be verified with observational data. Model output may be incorrect in the forecast of conduction, which has a large influence on the EML due to its contribution of diabetic heating at mid-levels. It's better to look at observational data, in this case a blend of the 7.3 micron band from GO16, the ALPW product, and soundings to track details of the EML and see where convection may weaken the EML. This technique of verifying the models with observational data can increase situational awareness of the potential role of an EML on a given day. The ALPW product I discussed is currently not available operationally on AWIPS. However, it is available on AWIPS via LDM feed from CIRA. If you're interested in receiving ALPW in this way for just your AWIPS, contact me. This concludes the training. If you have any questions, my contact info is listed here.